bit boring by the end of it where if that's all they're eating like how much corn mash can they eat before you start getting tired they didn't of it. so their first they didn't harvest is actually the collecting the sap can't see and the, the sap has anybody yeah, tried sap straight like you can uh, get can straight out of the tree so it's about three percent sugar it looks uh, like water it tastes lightly sweet um, so it was something that they did enjoy just drinking, like as an energy drink. And with that little bit of sugar, to give them that little bit of extra energy. Um, so they would collect it from the trees using, so today we have drills, electric drills okay. to put them in. In the old days, like our old days, like the time of the settlers, you've got like hand drills that they could use, or the manual drills. Back in the day with the indigenous people, of course, they do not have the benefit of drills that we have. Um, they would um, hack into the tree, like with a, a stone axe, to and, and try and do a V, open it up that way, and then the sap would come up. To collect the sap, they would insert, insert a spile such as this. So today... We have spiles like this, and if anybody's been down to the lake yet, you'll see it. We've got a couple of trees tapped with this kind of a spile. Spigot, spile, tap, they're all the same thing. Um, where they would insert it, in, we insert it into the tree and we attach a plastic bucket. So indigenous people 600 years ago did not have those devices to use. So for their spile or tap, they would use a hollowed out piece of wood. Now, we'll go on the you see that tree behind that me? That has the, the branches or twigs on that. The center is like pithy, so it's easy to hollow them out. So they would stick this into the tree where they've scored their notch, and the sap would come out here, and they would collect it in a birch bark vessel. So birch bark is waterproof, um, so you can make a, a, a watertight um vessel by using pitch like pine pitch or something more or less to glue it together and so they would collect it um in these birch bark vessels called I, love you, Mama. I believe it's macaque if you go through we've got a sweet water uh, demonstration in the deer clan and you'll get the proper spelling for it okay so then now they have their sap they would either drink it or they would turn it into maple sugar Maple sugar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they would use maple sugar. They wouldn't make maple syrup because maple syrup, they didn't have a way of uh, preserving it for a long time. If you have maple syrup sitting on your countertop, eventually it'll go, it'll get mold growing in it or it'll go bad. Uh, and that's why today it says after opening, refrigerate it. So they would make maple sugar. So how would they do that? So they would take their sap and they would typically put it into a clay pot and this clay pot could be put like right in the fire their campfire and it would be boiled off in a, in a clay pot and you could see umpteen clay pots being boiled down at the same time the reason why or sorry then with the maple sugar once so the ma ma maple sugar today you take maple uh, syrup and you boil that for a bit and then you stir it up and then you put it into some mold so they would do essentially the same thing. And the mold they would use is back to our birch bark vessel. They would have these cone shaped, um, whatever you want to call it, mold. Cone shaped mold scored in here. And then that way um, they could hang them up when they're drying their corn, hang it up there. They're stable, they're sweet. It was a, an important thing for them to trade with other nations because not everybody could make maple syrup. It's like we can make maple syrup here in Ontario, Quebec, New Brunswick. Um, I think Nova Scotia they make some as well. But further out west at the time, they were not making maple syrup out there just because they don't have the temperatures of, um, that we do here. The sap likes to run best when it's below minus or minus five at night and plus five during the day. So a day like today, we're probably not getting a lot of sap running. Maybe a little bit, depending on what the temperature is, but we don't have much sunshine. Um, so that's why this area here, they could make maple sugar. And so it was a, a valuable commodity to trade. And we know from artifacts that have been found in this location, they traded as far east to 
get seashells because they had a uh, use for seashells for different things. Um, so we know either they created directly or it was from another nation who traded with them or another one in the sea. So this was a very valuable um, uh, supplement to their diet in terms of energy. The sap itself has lots of nutrients, so going back when they were using it as an energy drink, yes, it has sugar in it, but it also has uh, a number of minerals in it. So it's, uh, it was uh, nutritious for them, and um, so delicious to eat. So, uh, and that's why they would be trading it. Any questions?